When Toyota launched the Lexus brand in 1989, the big news was the LS, a large four-door sedan that took its cues from the German brands of the day. My, how things have changed. The all-new UX is a small crossover. It's the brand's entry-level vehicle starting at $33,000. While Lexus isn't braggadocious about it, seems like it's embraced its Japanese heritage. The lines have a katakana brush stroke vibe. Available trim is meant to evoke Japanese washi paper. The paint color is nori green, you know, the dried seaweed on sushi rolls. There must be big money in small premium crossovers because there sure are a lot of them these days. So let's see, Audi Q3, BMW X1, Mercedes GLA, Cadillac XT4, Infiniti QX30, Volvo XC40. But the UX is the only one of them, at least for now, that's a hybrid. That's the version I'm driving, the 250H luxury model optioned up to $42,775. The hybrid is all-wheel drive, using an electric motor to turn the back tires up to 43 miles an hour. The gas-only UX200 is strictly a front driver. Automakers have all gravitated to scalable architectures. Simplistically, this shares the one under CHR and Corolla, both of which are available as hybrids in different markets worldwide. This gateway to the legendary Lexus dealer experience is not large, but it isn't tiny either, some three and a half inches shorter and a half inch narrower than a Honda CRV. UX actually stands for something urban crossover, though, it could be argued this is really more of a hatchback form factor, but really doesn't matter as long as it works for you. The load floor is on the high side for a small rig, not much space under here, and there's no spare. The UX has run flat tires. There are some helpful touches to make life a little easier, nice, some small cubbies to squirrel stuff away too. No need for remote releases, the reach into the cargo hold is easy for anyone. Uh, would I like 40-20-40 split seats or a pass-through? Of course, this being a premium brand, anything to help the flexibility of the cargo hold would help because it's not very big. Audi Q3 holds six packs, BMW X1 takes it up to eight. The UX stops at four. And if you think I could pack more in, uh, nope, I tried. The lift gate needs to close, you know, common sense. Moving on to the powertrain, the hybrid, which adds $2,000 to the price, is the most powerful UX by 12 horsepower. The two-liter four-cylinder and three electric motors generate a total of 181 horsepower. There's a pretty fancy light show on startup, uh, but generally you're not going to hear the engine kick on because this is a hybrid. Now, occasionally it will fire up. That generally happens when the temperatures are cold outside. The nickel metal hydride battery is tucked under the rear seat. Like other Lexus cars, drive modes are here. Sport sharpens the throttle and simulated gear shifts a bit. The hybrid's transmission is a planetary type continuously variable transmission. Manual shifts, as it were, are done here. F Sport models get steering wheel paddles. Now, if you're thinking that this powertrain is the same one that's in a Prius, just in a Lexus wrapper, uh, no. Remember, this is a 2-liter. The Prius runs with a 1.8. This isn't a rocket off the line, but the electric motors uh, make it feel punchy. Uh, 0 to 60, according to Lexus, is 8.6 seconds. That's a tick quicker than the gas-only 200 model. Let's get right to fuel economy. Driving normally, I found it easy to get 38 miles to the gallon with some strategy, a very light throttle, and a lot of frustrated people behind me. I up that figure substantially. Now, this being a hybrid, I don't need to explain the fact that when you coast or brake, it recharges the battery, and then when you take off, it starts off with the electric motor, and then the gas engine feathers in. Do I? All right. Aluminum doors, fenders, and hood help to give the UX a very low center of gravity. That and brake torque vectoring helps cornering. Toyota and Lexus have done a lot to improve the handling of their vehicles recently. Uh, this is kind of fun to sling into a corner. Really. 
Personally, I prefer the BMW X2, but this is no slouch, and it's far more fuel efficient. This being a Lexus, you would expect it to be comfortable, and it is, you would also think it would be quiet. And it is in situations like this. Now, out on the highway, there's more road noise than I would have thought. Above 50 miles an hour, there's some wind noise from the front pillars. None of this is a deal breaker. Just understand that it's not as hushed as an LS sedan. The F Sport model gets a firmer ride. Make sure that you test drive both setups to see which you prefer. UX comes standard with a suite of electronic safety features such as automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection and a lane keep system that really works well, locks you right in the middle. And again, it's standard, something a lot of luxury brands could learn from. Punch a destination into the Navi system and the 250H uses topographical data to boost efficiency. For example, it knows which sections of your route are downhill and instructs the powertrain to use additional electric power before you come to those points. Then, coasting on those downgrade sections, the battery charges up again, ready to start the cycle all over again. Remember, this has a continuously variable transmission, and I don't tend to like those. Uh, this one is okay. It feels a bit like a regular geared gearbox. Uh, it's not as good as the gold standard, in my opinion, the new Kia Soul. Seriously. Once again, the UX is not a very large vehicle, but the designers worked visual magic to make the interior seem roomier than it is, and the instrument panel materials look great. My camera can't show it, but the vent knobs are lighted wirelessly by electromagnetic resonance. Door panels can be seen as either elegant or plain, and the plastics here are harder than expected from Lexus. The bean counters left their mark here and there. The sunroof is standard sized. Which brings me to the user interface. The Lexus trackpad could be the most frustrating input device I've used in any car. It lacks accuracy when the car is standing still, let alone while driving. Much more successful are these controls for volume and tuning. They're great for the driver. So are the piano key buttons that control the climate system. Apple CarPlay is along for the ride. Android Auto is not. The door openings back here are small, making it hard for me to get my kids' car seats in Evil and Twin, out. Evil Twin, I didn't know you had kids. And those little devils. I should have seen that one coming a mile away. As for adults, uh, it is not very spacious back here, but there's just enough room for my five foot nine frame when it comes to head, knee, leg, and foot room. And really, Lexus, you couldn't give one more pocket back here? At least people can charge phones. There are no door pockets. If you're making a Starbucks run, those in back will eliminate the middle position to stash their Frappuccinos. But that's okay because this space is really designed for two passengers. Three's a crowd here. The UX will probably be bought by couples. The styling of this small crossover has dramatic cuts, the expected cladding, and softer lines than others in the Lexus X line. This is not Euro design. Lexus designers embraced a unique language years ago for those who complain that all cars look the same these days. The UX250H is distinctive, fuel efficient, and it's a Lexus. The family face definitely telegraphs that message to the world. Keep in mind that the as-tested price of $42,700 buys a pretty well-equipped ES sedan with more room for passengers to stretch out in. But crossovers are the hot segment right now, and Lexus has a lineup of small, medium, and large. That's a solid strategy to lure new customers then keep them. I'll point out that the gas-only UX200 has a different transmission from the 250H. It's a CVT with an actual first gear. I experienced it in the Toyota Corolla hatchback. The dynamics are pretty good. Now, at the LA Auto Show, I was lucky to snag an interview with the chief engineer of the UX, Chika Kako. Her English is far far better than my Japanese. Here's a brief snippet also, about the interior. Yeah. Space-wise, so this vehicle is not really the biggest, of course, so, and the uh, smallest in the Lexus. So I want to, still, I want to have uh, uh, my openness. Then uh, uh, we call that the uh, shakke. 
borrow the scenery from the outside. You know, we have uh, that kind of thinking way of Japanese uh, traditional architecture to have a, you know, uh, if you visit the temple, so you have the garden and there's a mountain behind. So they are trying to have, have a whole things together, yeah, to feel the openness and the na nature. Then, so that is a kind of concept. And there are some small tricks. There is a character line here on the dashboard and continue to the uh, bonnet. And it makes some links between inside to the outside. And this character line goes to the placement of the tire and when you drive, so it's a, you can have a, a good sense of dimension. And the whole the, uh, layout of the uh, operational cities is located uh, by using a grouping function related to driving is located uh, around here. And also cities for the air conditioning is here. And for the entertainment, it's placed here. I love getting the inside story from engineers and designers. I'll have a much longer version of this interview soon with a link at the end of this video. And finally, after I shot this and gave the car back, it was announced that Infinity is eliminating the QX30. So if you fancy the swoopy sheet metal on that, look into one sooner rather than later. That's how I feel about the Lexus UX250H, but you you might feel differently, so that's why it's so important to test drive. I get a lot of emails from people asking, hey Tom, what kind of car should I buy? And my answer is always the same. I'll give them a choice of four or five different vehicles in the category they're shopping in, and then tell them, get out there and experience them. Cars cost a lot of money, and I can't tell you what kind of car to buy. You need to buy the one that's right for you, all right? So get out there and test drive. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.